Hey, hey, what's going on? You are watching and listening today to a, a brand new episode of my second podcast, The Brother, I like to say The Brother, to Tag's podcast, Talk About Gay Sex. Talk About Gay Sex has been going on for three years. I We are celebrating our third year anniversary, which we're super excited about that. Um, and in response to the third year anniversary, we have so many listeners. And because we have so many listeners and followers, we're so grateful to you all that I wanted to do a secondary pod podcast called Sex with Stevie. It's every Thursday night from 10 to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 to 8 Pacific Standard Time on the West Coast. And it's a call-in show. It's so you guys can call in uh, and weigh in on hot gay sex topics, ask for some solicited sex advice, or just say hi. The number to call in I posted on the Facebook page is 908-312-1015. I've got some special guests calling in in the next hour. I'm so excited. I've got uh, DJ Laurent calling up first off who's got, uh, uh, he actually has our theme song for Tag's podcast. So you will know his music from that. He's got um, his record label going strong. He's celebrating an anniversary with that. And he is spinning virtually tomorrow night for a jockstrap party. He's going to be talking all about that and how you can participate in that. A little bit later on the show, I've got porn star, uh, extraordinaire Bruce Beckham calling in and he has an OnlyFans page that is blowing up and producing so much live content but he also is going to be live amongst some other special guests tomorrow live um, in this coronavirus period we're all getting so creative I'm so happy for all of us that we are creatively active and our gay community is super active. Bruce is going to show us how tomorrow you can see him live on an Instagram live post and he's going to probably show you all. So check in for that. Um, my co-host who's going to be joining me when we end all this coronavirus, Cody Maurice, uh, is going to be joining me periodically throughout this episode. I'm so excited for that. Um, and you can call in. The, gonna, the number to call in is 908-312-1015. You can comment um, on the page. Uh, let me know that you are hearing me and that um, you have some questions. I just want to, before we get started, um, I, there's some announcements that I want to let everybody know about and have you noticed that since we've been self-quarantining that your dance card has been kind of filled up well i have for example this weekend i'm kind of booked up i mean in a minute um, in a minute, we're, I'm going to tell you about Bruce Beckham, who's live tomorrow night. We've got uh, DJ Laurent, who's spinning for a live. I'm inundated with so many live events and musical events with so many of my favorite artists. I, there's so much content coming our way. I just want to applaud how creative we are all being right now. Um, Let's see, um, Cody Doggett, hey, um, hey Cody, so can you hear me? I just want to know that you can hear me, let me know. Um, I know you're going to be calling in a little bit later. Um, let me know that. Um, yeah, so one of the things that uh, I want to remind people before my first caller calls in is that we have a book club right now. I started a book club. And it's a guy who wrote in to me. Uh, the book is called Every Grain of Sand. It's by David P. Wickman. You can get this on Amazon. Um, you can get it really easily on Amazon if you want to do the Kindle version. I know they're a little bit backed up on Amazon. A friend told me that you can get it on 
barnesandnoble.com and thrifty books or thrifty there's another website anyways i have all of this on the website right now tagspodcast.com we are starting i'm getting letting everybody have a chance to get the book and read along with me and we're going to divide the book into two sections essentially and kind of discuss it the first half of the book and then we'll do the second half of the book and then we'll get the author on and discuss the whole book um but i want to let everybody get the book and so again it's every grain of sand by david p wickman um if you're don't know go to tagspodcast.com and you uh will get the links to all of that um some other announcements that i wanted to make Um, There's so many things right now, like I was just talking about, on how we can keep entertained during uh, self-isolating. And one of them is our partner, our friend, is the the Vakaya Cruise Line. And the Vakaya Cruise Line is doing a Saturday night spotlight. Uh, Last week they did Tori Scott, and I tuned in. It's from 8 to 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Vakaya Cruise Line Facebook page. So you just go to facebook.com forward slash myvakaya. If you like it, they'll send you an update uh, as to when they're going live. But essentially, it's every Saturday night, Eastern Standard Time, 5 o'clock on the West Coast, 8 o'clock here on the East Coast. And this week, they have got... um, Let me get who... um, I don't want to get it wrong... Um, check who they have this week because it's a comedian, I, I believe, and it's going to be really fun. And so I invite you to check in on that. Uh, let me just check my feed right here. Um, good. Yep. Good. Thanks, Cody. I sound good. Thank you so much. Um, good. Exactly. Um, So you know what? We are doing a lot of polls on our Patreon page recently, and I don't have enough time to get into all of them right now. We're going to get into them in the show. Um, But if you become a Patreon member of Tag's podcast, you get some extra special sexy perks. And right now I'm really dedicated to giving you something a lot. So for example, if you listen to the show all the time, uh, this week I did a dark and dirty. It's an after show to Tags podcast to episode 150. And this week I was talking about fisting, that time that I got fisted. <laughs> yep, that time that I got fisted. Um, and I was reminded of it because I was walk right before we were told to self-quarantine. I was walking down the street here in New York City and I saw a guy, the guy that had originally fisted me in the first time ever. And it was an interesting time because we were like elbow bumping, but I knew we had been so much deeper (laughs) in the past. So um, if you become a Patreon member, member is what I'm going to, you can support Tag's podcast, Sex with Stevie, on a tiered basis. So there's everything from $5, $10, up to 50 and a hundred dollars and you get some extra special sexy perks just by supporting the show and we really appreciate when you do that because you keep the show going you keep my co-host jeremy ross lopez in lincoln um, engaged with you so that we can continue to bring on people like dr goldstein and people like master joshua and all your favorites that have helped us complete and round out our sexuality that is so important to us, particularly in this time that we are all self-isolating. So I invite you to check in with that. Again, the number to call in is 908-312-1015. I've got some great guests coming up your way. DJ Laurent is about to call in and a little bit later in the show I've got Bruce Beckham porn star who's telling us why he's going to be um, dancing um, performing I think tomorrow on an Instagram live post and also talking about his um, um, how he's keeping active during this period so lots to look forward to um, 
while we wait for that call, um, I was I was interested. Um, you know, I live in New York City here, and it's so interesting because I have doormen that I've known. I've been here 13 years now. And it's so interesting because we have been through so much. So today I went down there and they had their masks on. Um, but I, I couldn't help but think about the time, recall when Hurricane Sandy happened and it was a blackout here in my building. I couldn't help think about gay pride, world pride, just a year ago where all of the, the guys that worked downstairs in my building had gay pride um, flags, pins on their lapels to show support for all of us. I couldn't help think about when we had a bomb threat that was just an avenue block away on how we were they were securing us all. It's interesting when you live in a building like this in New York City. A lot of people have been asking me what's it like going in New York City. Well it's a ghost town ghost town out there. But there's some solace and some comfort in knowing when you have building staff that are really there for you and, and you know that we've all been through that so um, it was interesting today when I walked out as I continued to layer up with not only my gloves but now I have like my handkerchief um, you know mask on and it's just interesting so um, I'm looking to see to hear who's t I know I have my caller DJ Laurent calling in shortly um, let's see and he's calling in right now let me get that call hey which um, what's your name and where are you calling from is this DJ Laurent it's DJ Laurent. <laughs> Thank you. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Hanging in there. Good, good, good. Um, Laurent, um, a lot of people don't know, but you do our theme song for Tag's podcast here. And so people may or may not know it, but they hear your music all the time. And tell everybody your record label just to start everything off. Well, and I've been a guest a couple of times, so maybe some of them know me. Uh, my record label is called Royal Advisor Records. We are a queer-focused dance music label that um, specializes, specializes in New York City queer talent. It's not exclusive in New York City, but, you know, for the most part. You're celebrating a big year, and um, I'm just wondering, how many years are you celebrating with um, the record label? It's our 10th year. Exactly. And so, how has this coronavirus, I know you were planning a big, and you might still be planning a big celebration, um, but how has it affected how you release music and just your mood on what's going on? You know, as early as January, I lined up all the releases for the year, and uh, we were kind of on a roll. Uh, you know, I called it hashtag RAR10, um, but I had to postpone some releases uh, and the parties. As far as the 10-year uh, party goes, it was supposed to be in July. Um, I'm not sure now if it's going to be in July, but definitely sometime uh, this year before 2021. Well, I guess we're all on the same boat when it comes to that. Well, congratulations on that. Um, Thank you. I'm, I'm just curious, you know, you produce music for other artists, you produce your own music. Um, how are you handling this self-isolation? Um, just personally, I'm just curious so our listeners can know. Um, the you know, only in the last couple of days I felt a little restless, but other than that, I've actually been uh, quite productive. I'm all working on a new track. It's almost finished. Um, so, uh, so I think that's my answer. I've been reading a lot. You know, it's interesting because I found, found myself being even more structured during this period because... Obviously, I can't really, aside from getting groceries once in a while, 
um, I, like yourself, work from home and I'm also getting a lot done. Um, I don't know if it's a blessing in disguise or if we'll think ourselves in the end, um, but I wanted well, to... I think it's just uh, making the best of the situation. <laughs> Thank you, yes. I think we're definitely <laughs> doing that. I mean, because what's the alternative, right? Right, exactly. Um, I wanted to talk about you are spinning. So normally here in New York City, there's a popular party called Rockstrap, which is a right. jock, which is a jockstrap party, which happens at Rock Bar in the West Village. And right. I've been to it before. You spin at it. You've been your, you spin your sexy tracks. Everybody shows up at Rock Bar in the Village. It's a sexy locale. Um, change and they get into their jock straps. You're actually right. spinning tomorrow for a virtual party. Tell us what's going on with that. Yeah, so Rock Strap is the first Monday of, sorry, first Friday of every month at Rock Bar in the West Village. And uh, it does quite well. And tomorrow, since we can physically be there to host the event, I'm doing a live DJ set starting at 8 p.m. from my house. And um, it will be a live feed on Rock Bar's Facebook page, which is really easy to find if you search for Rock Bar NYC. It starts at 8 p.m., and uh, we're raising for the money for the crew that usually makes the party happen. So I'm looking forward to it. I've never done a live feed before. <laughs> this is going to be so fun. People, I'm, I'm so excited that people are getting so creative. Um, can people from home participate? Um, or essentially just get into your jockstrap, is that how it works? Well, what we're, what we're asking people to do is, you know, keep in mind uh, that it has to be Facebook friendly, but if they're uh, tuning in to, in the comment section, leave a picture of themselves in their uh, jockstraps as they're watching the feed and hopefully dancing at home. I love it, I love it. And if yeah. people want to tip and, um, you know, our entertainers like yourself, how can people do that? Can they do that straight on the feed, do you know? Yeah, we're going to have a Venmo account up. Uh, there'll be probably signs behind me, and uh, there'll be Venmo, uh, and a Venmo account up in the description of the feed. Curious question for you. Do you when you DJ, whether it's normally live at Rock Bar or tomorrow night, um, do you mm -hmm. like to wear a jock strap and be, get in the mood of it, or you just you're like, no, let me let let me just do my thing and let everybody. I don't wear a jock strap, but I sometimes wear short shorts. Oh, okay. I like that. <laughs> I, might, I might wear them tomorrow. I think you should. Yeah, I think I will. Steve, did you know that your uh, your uh, um, live video is closed captioned? No, I didn't. Um, it is. Interestingly enough, I don't, I don't know that I can turn that off right now, but... No, it's great. <laughs> but good. Um, for for um, our deaf people out there, and I learned it's deaf, not hearing impaired, so um, this might be a good thing. But you're right, I'm, I'm looking down at it, I'm seeing it, and interesting, I like that. <laughs> Um, How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. You know, I'm keeping busy with the show. I am two shows per week, and I have a bunch of other projects. I'm trying to exercise here. I'm talking to my mom and my sister and friends, um, you and everybody else. Um, you know, we're. You just have to realize we are in it. Um, we, if you look at history, there have been other times when there have been similar times period. It just happens to be our time. This isn't what we planned when we cheersed in 2020 in January, but this is where we're at. And it's, right. we've just, there will, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And um, it's our duty to just keep our head up and, and keep on, keep on, keep it on. It's all yeah, and kind of take care of each other, and and even if it's in a distant kind of way. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, okay, so how can people follow you? Uh, I think my main platform, I'd say, is Instagram. Um, that's DJ underscore L-O-R-A-N-T, and if you want to find me on SoundCloud, it's soundcloud.com slash DJ Laurent. 
Perfect. I'm going to list those on tagspodcast.com because this show Thank gets you. repackaged for tomorrow. Um, so those that aren't tuning in tonight, it gets and they'll get that and I want to know that. And so, and again, tomorrow people should go to the Rock Bar Facebook page, Rock Bar NYC. Yeah, Rock Bar NYC at 8 p.m. And, uh, you know, in case people want to share it to their friends, it'll be shareable. Awesome, awesome. And if you could put that in the comment section too, just tonight, um, that would be great. Yeah, you want me to leave as a comment? That's yeah, cool. that'd be great. I'll listen okay. too. Um, Laurent, I want to thank you so much. You're one of my favorite people, and I'm so happy you're safe and healthy, and I want to wish you to continue to be safe and healthy. You too. Thank you so much. All I'll right. talk to you later. Sounds good. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. So you heard it there. Um, the number to call in for my show is 908 312 1015. It's a live show, and I didn't realize that I've got, um, um, what do you call it when the, they put the, <laughs> um, anyway, you can read what we're talking about it too, which is kind of cool. I'm just looking at um, some of our comments um, as I have a call here. Hey, caller, what's your name and where are you calling from? Hey, Steve, it's Cody, calling from Brooklyn. Cody, Cody, how are you? Hey, I'm good, boo, how are you? I'm doing very good, considering the circumstances. Um, I'm yeah. alive, just like Hey, you. that's one out, of, one out of one, we're doing good. Exactly. Um, I just yeah. want to remind people that um, Cody is somebody that when I first thought of my this second podcast, to Tag's podcast, called Sex with Stevie, I immediately thought of Cody because I knew we had become really Aww. good friends and, I, yeah. and uh, we had planned on starting this show together, it's kind of side by side here, and I hope and plan that we will get to a point where he will be sitting next to me in the near future, we'll be taking and fielding a lot of your calls, but um, in the meantime, he's calling from Brooklyn, and um, Cody, real quick, tell us how you work at a restaurant here in New York City, and last Sunday, you did a live broadcast, correct? Oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I was really nervous here. I, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't expect to be that nervous over it, like with nobody actually being in the audience. But it was kind of nerve wracking. <laughs> I could imagine. I could imagine. I mean, you, you were singing a cappella, correct? Yeah, I sang a cappella, and then I did like a karaoke version of another song just for fun, just so that everybody could get up and dance and have some other things to. I you know, couldn't believe that you were saying, Can you stand the rain? I can't yeah, say I'm not singing. <laughs> but that was good. I well, know. please. The reason I say that song is um, a lot of people don't know, and, the, and this show is so a little bit of radio because it's a live call in show. But I used to work in radio back in the 90s for uh -huh. years into the early 2000s. And I, I worked that. in R&B radio, and Can You Stand yeah. the Rain? was a staple. It was um, <laughs> KBLX, The Quiet Storm, and it was, that song was such a staple, and I couldn't believe that was your opening, one of your opening songs that you sang. Um, yeah. Such a good one. I mean, you can't go wrong with it, when, and it was raining that day on Sunday, and I was like, this is perfect, and I know, I know it backwards and forwards, so it's kind of like my go-to song. Um, it was great. I had a great time singing. It was just so much fun, and it's good to connect with people. Um, and especially in this time of social distancing, it was just good to, like, be able to express myself in that way. So, will you I think we can do it again. Will you yeah, we're going to do it again next week. Not oh, good. Sunday, but the one after, at 12. So tell people how they can tune in to um, listen to it. Um, my Instagram, Cody Maurice, uh, sorry, Mr. Maurice, um, or the Poco, uh, Poco Instagram, NYC. Poco, Poco NYC, whenever that goes live on the 12th, we have, uh, other events too, yeah. so if you follow that, they have all kinds of events all the time, but my event is on the 12th, um, and it'll be at 8 o'clock. Oh, is it this Sunday? 
No, no, no. The, uh, two weeks. Okay. So let me look at that. Yeah. If you wouldn't mind putting in the comment section after we're done talking, just when um, your next date, I will list it obviously on everything that we're talking about tonight. It will be on Tag's podcast, so you'll yeah, and you can get that. But Cody, if you don't Thank mind, you. when we're done, just putting that in there. I tuned in. Uh, your co-worker slash artist friend saying, "Oh my God, she was so good!" And yeah, she's amazing. What's her name? Her name is Tess Elena. Okay, got it, got it. She's so good. Yeah, I love her. Um, and we're working on some duet stuff. Like I know you know because of like the lag. Yeah. Of like uh, the video calling and all that kind of stuff, it was kind of hard to to do duet. Yeah. But we're working on overcoming that that hurdle so that we can actually get some crank some duets out. And then Cody, I know that you were last time I was talking to you when we were hanging out. You've been dating somebody very special. Oh, uh, I, knew I saw this coming. <laughs> <laughs> How is that going? How are you keeping? Um, so. Uh, I'm trying to keep it fresh. We're still working things out. Like, we had a video date last Saturday, mm -hmm. so almost a week ago. Um, yeah, but it's hard, man. It's hard to keep involved. It's hard to keep um, in connection when you're social distance. So well, I'm and, like, I'm a, and maybe because, partly because you guys, when I, when I was hanging out with you, it was becoming really fresh. It's in other words, yeah, you it was just a month. you had you just been a month, and that time's so critical when you're really spending time yeah. with somebody, and and so I could just imagine how now with this. So how are you trying to keep it fresh? Do you guys you did the date, which is really good. Do you guys talk? Yeah, we had two so far, two video dates. Um, I try we try to talk every every day, or I mean, I try to touch them every day. But, or every other day, um, yeah. We just try to keep in communication as, as much as possible. So on my on our other podcast, Tags Podcast, I was talking to my co-host the other day, uh, Jeremy uh -huh. Ross Lopez and Lincoln, and I. Lincoln is in a relationship, so he's good. And but I sort of proposed the idea for Jeremy and myself, although he was not into it at all. But the idea <laughs> being that isn't wouldn't this be a good idea to use the apps, use technology and reach out on whether it's Scruff, Grinder, what have you, and use uh -huh. their dating service portion of it. And let's just say you connect with somebody that you would potentially be interested in going on a date. So I think my idea was that normally you would, you know, let's get together for a dinner date or, but I don't like dinner dates. I think they waste too much time. I, too much time. Yeah. I'm the same way. But what <laughs> if, yeah. So what if you went on the apps like that and you swiped and those that said they were interested in dating that really wanted to, you did sort of a FaceTime or a, a virtual date with a cocktail, like a wine, a glass of wine. So it's maybe 10, 15 minutes. Now, if yeah. you don't want to give your phone number, like what you're calling in right now, Cody, is on my Google uh -huh. phone number. So there's not a lot of, um, you can't track me down. So yeah. you could give that. That just means that you probably couldn't FaceTime, but you could do maybe say other um, Zoom or and have a cocktail date with somebody just during this period. I mean, what do you think yeah. about that? I think that that's a good way for people to actually connect and not feel so far apart from one another. I think that that's a good way for people yeah. to meet new people. I think Grinder is even actually um, advocating that, and I think yeah. that they've extended, extend, expanded their their the range and the number of people you can view um, to more people, so that it's more easily and readily available for people to connect. Which I think is awesome. Oh, I might have I to think get a grinder account again. <laughs> <laughs> get on there. I might. Okay. <laughs> I love it. Oh man. Yeah, uh, and even if you go on just to meet friends, like you don't even have to go on it necessarily. Um, 
let it be about any sex or anything like that. It could be completely about yeah. meeting somebody new and, 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 and having a, a new experience with somebody that you hadn't met before. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I've got to get to my next guest, but Cody, um, yeah, I'm wishing you well. I can't wait. Um, real quick, um, you will be live again on April, what's the date? Uh, the 12th, for sure. The 12th. It's Easter Sunday, which is like, oh man, what am I going to do now? Okay. <laughs> glad I have another week to prepare. We're going to talk about that offline. Um, thank you so much, Cody. Sounds good. Thank you, Steve. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye, boo. All right. All right, um, that's my Cody, who we were supposed to be live when all of this started. Um, I've got my next caller calling in. Um, hey, what's your name and where are you calling from? <laughs> hey, Steve, I'm hoping you know who this is. Bruce Beckham, <laughs> hi. Yeah. Hey there, I just, I just caught a snippet of the live feed on Facebook. I see you. Hey, you're hanging out there with your glass of wine. You're totally normal, regular night. <laughs> totally normal, regular night. Trying to be Dr. Drew here and, um, yeah, taking calls and all that. Um, thank you so How's much. the podcast? How's it? Oh, yeah. I'm happy. Thanks for having me be a guest on it. How's it going so far? So this is our third week of our second, um, my second podcast, Sex with Stevie, and we're doing good. We launched um, right during... You know, I had always planned on doing this second podcast right. as right. Th our three-year anniversary, as our numbers are doing really good on Tag's podcast. I didn't plan on doing it during this coronavirus period. Yeah. It's been somewhat of a blessing, and we'll get into why, it, how you're 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 um, utilizing a lot of this. Um, yeah, but you have this built. You have this built-in captive audience now. They can't go anywhere. They're stuck. <laughs> You. <laughs> yeah. It's been a good thing. Where are they going to go? It's been a good thing, yes, and I want to thank you for being on the show. Um, for those that don't know, Bruce has been on our show, on our live podcast before. He's been on our regular podcast. Um, I'll put that on Tag's podcast. Um, Bruce, you've let's just get started. Um, you've got an Great. old fans page that does so well. Um, you transferred from being, would you call yourself a porn star, into your OnlyFans page? Yeah, you know, I mean, that's sort of been like a complicated year for me with making that decision. Uh, I, I, I was doing a lot of adult film. I did a lot of adult film from 2016 through uh, 18. Uh, and then I was dating somebody in 2019, so I sort of stepped away from the film and, to, and from the OnlyFans to a degree. And I've been single again for all of 2020. Um, and <laughs> as, so as many just, of us I have was, been. <laughs> yeah, and I was just on the cusp of like setting up some shoots and going out to do some work again. And our current situation swoops down. So obviously no one's shooting or filming now. But I do have that platform of OnlyFans going, which has been a godsend for me and a lot of other guys in the industry, even prior to COVID-19. But certainly now it's work that we continue to generate income with. Um, it's a way to interact with, with uh people who appreciate our work and um so yeah i'm super grateful that it's there it's definitely an income stream i'm grateful for and you know it's another way to interact with fans I, i've noticed they've been engaging me a lot more the past couple of weeks through that platform too do you think that since the industry your industry porn in general has has been shifting dramatically in the last several years from people not being necessarily true to just one studio becoming only fans having their only fans pages um do you think that this is a good time for artists like yourself that now because you don't have to necessarily be adherent to just one studio you can take control of your own content and not that you know, anyone who wants to say that it's because, you know, what's going on, but do you think it's a good time for your type of art artistry? You know, I think in general, um, in the same way the music industry lost some business when people figured out how to stream stuff for free. The porn industry lost some business when people started figuring out that they could get porn for free. Um, and it inspired 
people to develop other platforms like OnlyFans to produce content, and it was just serendipitous that the performers were able to take control of the income stream of the product. Um, I'm never going to argue against studio porn. I think it's amazing. Uh, I think they capture all of us in a really great way. Um, we look phenomenal the way they, they produce and shoot and light and angle us. Um, and there's a market for that. And there's also a market for a more amateur style, which is what the performers are doing with their OnlyFans content. To a degree. I mean, I know a couple guys that produce OnlyFans content. They hire a full film crew. They have their content edited so that it's as glossy as studio porn. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think... I don't know that the, the current COVID-19 situation is, is that directly impactful on the, the surge of OnlyFans. I think... I do. I have seen the past couple of weeks people who, you know, uh, we've people who we've never heard of trying to put some content out there just because it's a way of maybe making some money. And I have to applaud that and the resourcefulness. I think a lot of people lost their jobs recently. I think a lot of people are out of work for a while. And anyone who's looking for another way to hustle and is willing to put themselves out there into the world for 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 people to see sexually, you know, I applaud the bravery and the ingenuity. Um, you know, but I I do think. Um, I do think the industry in general is shifting, and and I think they're, they we're going to ultimately end up in a world where everyone who works in adult film will have both. I had heard a year ago there was a studio that was discouraging their exclusives from having OnlyFans content because they wanted to make sure the only place you could see them was through their content, and I don't think that's practical. I think ultimately you'll be able to see two sides of the performers, and you know anyone, everyone will have probably both. And, and just real quick before we get into what you're doing tomorrow, because that's really what I want to promote and talk about. Um, cool. What have you noticed in, what could you share with us from an uh, insider to the porn industry that you've noticed in behind the scenes of the porn industry during this COVID period? Um, are, are are they telling you like less scenes um, what what could you share with us just from a curiosity well, standpoint I mean, yeah I mean to my knowledge every production is shut down no one's shooting right now the last the last studio that I heard was shooting something was uh, in Vegas just as this like maybe the first week of March at the latest um, and uh, as far as I know no one's shooting no one's flying anywhere you know I think it's even sort of, to be socially conscious and, and, and respectful of what's going on to contribute to the greater good, I don't even think people are leaving their own apartments to go to other performance houses to just shoot only fat stuff. Like, I've, Which is I've good. That being really, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that is, 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 is responsible behavior. Um, anything you can do to contribute to slowing the spread of this and not impacting the hospital system is great. Um, and I know the fans want new content, but it's, we're all just going to have to sort of like bunker down for a little bit and get through this. And before we know it, we'll be back to filming orgies again. <laughs> there you go. And there you go. Well, let's talk real quick about um, tomorrow. You're participating in a live Instagram. Tell us a little bit about that and um, what to expect. Yeah. So Josh Moore is a friend of mine. He reached out to me to ask me to be part of this. I believe, I haven't gotten 100% confirmation from Falcon, but I believe that I'm going to be a regular guest on Friday. So I sort of brought that up to Josh, and we'll kind of do a weekly wrap-up of what's been going on in the week, maybe talk about some of the things that the other guests that we have talked about. Um, and Josh just wanted to do it to sort of like put some positivity out there. I've caught all the episodes this week. It's every day at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Josh Moore Official's Instagram page. Um, and he's just sitting down and chatting with your favorite adult film stars. Falcon is co-sponsoring it, so they're, they're offering a 50% off to all the viewers with a special link during the broadcast. Nice. Um, and it's just a way to sort of like get a peek inside the world of your favorite porn stars, how they're doing right now, what they might have coming. Uh, and just if you've never gotten to see what the personalities of some of your favorite porn stars are like, you have an opportunity to do that. And he's had some great guests on this week already. He's had uh, Wesley Woods on. Uh, Diego Sanz is on with me tomorrow. He had Rebecca Moore on today. She, you know, she was one of the, the the duo, the famous duo, the Cock Destroyers. <laughs> yeah. Um, those two, those two British girls. So he's had some great guests. He's reached out to a few drag queens that are going to be on it. So it's just going to be a lot of great fun 
porn and porn adjacent guests just sort of like trying to uplift everyone's spirits and give them all something to do and keep us all busy and entertained while we're getting through this period of sort of being locked up at home. And then we'll list it, but what time are you on tomorrow? So I'm on at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The show is an hour from 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on, on Josh Moore Official's Instagram page, his okay. Instagram live feed. And uh, I will be on tomorrow at 3.30. My segment starts then. And to my knowledge, I'll be on every Friday at 3.30. Awesome. I love it. I love it. And then yeah. how happy are you that you have a... Um, um, a um, your page, what do you call it? Um, OnlyFans page, like because I mean, go ahead. Because um, in general, um, people, a lot of people have said, you know, given a little flack for like OnlyFans. Or, oh, he has one of those OnlyFans, but yeah. isn't What's it that? like re a really good thing during <laughs> this time? Tell, talk a little bit about. Yeah, like, I mean, you know. I was, I was, I was making that joke two weeks ago that you know. <laughs> All of the people who are naysaying the idea of OnlyFans or when are you going to get a real job, all of a sudden they're dipping their toe into it because they're, you know, and I'm not, I'm certainly not gloating that anyone's no, going no, to job or I know. Find, have to find work. But it's, you know, it's one of those things where they're like, oh, all of a sudden that is a viable income, you know. I, I, I do not put as much work into my OnlyFans as some of the guys that I know. And some of the guys that I know, they are hustling. They're filming three to five scenes a week. They are constantly putting up new content. They are refreshing, refreshing, and constantly putting up new content. I do not post as often, and I'm still lucky enough that my rent is paid through my OnlyFans, and my cell phone bill is paid through my OnlyFans. And, you know, it's, it's, I'm grateful for that income stream, and I'm also grateful for, for a way to put up content that is more organic to me, you know? Nothing you see on my OnlyFans is gonna be anything that I would first choose to do. Right. Last year, I. Last year, I didn't film content with any people. I was in a relationship. That was part of the agreement. I was only going to do solo stuff. So to be honest with you, I'm really, ex I'm really excited to get back out there and film some more original content for that with, with guys I, I want to film with. And, uh, and now I'm on quarantine, so I'm a little like, ah! But I had a whole list of guys I wanted to shoot with. So we, I've had many discussions. I've had many discussions with guys uh, where, okay, it's still on, but it's got to be on hold for now. And... So curious, I mean, curious question for somebody yeah. when you're in a relationship with somebody and you right. do the work that you do, what's the conversation that you have initially with them that lets them know that, I don't know, I'm making this up, but this is work, yeah. but I, when right. I have sex with you, I'm just curious and so many of us want to know. Yeah. So I can answer that. There's the ideal way, and there is what usually ends up being the reality of it. And ideally, from my perspective, I would be very sympathetic to explain to someone what I do is non-traditional. It's not easy for people to reconcile. But if you just hang in there and sort of observe how I work and get to know me, you will eventually develop an understanding that this really is just work. I'm not emotionally attached to it. Uh, it is not something that will ever take away my loyalty or desire for you. And, you know, it's not any more threatening than anyone else's job would be. I dated someone who was a, a creative individual. They often worked from home. And, you know, I would never think to say to them, you can't work from home because I'm jealous of your work. But the reverse was true quite often, you know. And, and it's... <laughs> I, I am I'm sympathetic to the, the fact that it is non-traditional. It's some people might view what I do as, and then dating me at the same time as being in an open relationship. You know and what? Some are down for that. Some aren't. But here's the thing: um, in this self-quarantining period, I have been figuring out my workouts at home, and I found a workout on YouTube with this guy at that he worked with Self Magazine, and I've done his hit training workouts and he's very like gorgeous but very like professional and then I decided to follow him on Instagram of you know creep on him and he's sure. got sort of a badass different persona on his Instagram that he does when he's on his hit training self magazine right. Right. and I would imagine it's sort of the same thing it's that there's right. a persona that we put out there for what right. You know, the mainstream, albeit your mainstream might be more, 
you know, coveted yeah. towards a certain, you know, audience. But then there is your real self. And then there's just those, right. the yourself that only those special people that are intimate with you get to right. know. And what, what, I, what I tend to tell every guy that I'm interested in, which is it's many, and I haven't dated often, so it's not like I have to And you're not often. dating that much right now, clearly, because of certainly, this. <laughs> certainly no. Yeah. But I tell them, like, listen, if you think you're going to be dating Bruce Beckham, that's not who I am. <laughs> and if you, if, you, if you have that in yeah. your head, <laughs> you're, going, you're, going to be, you're going to be disappointed. But if you want to get to know, fill in my real name here, yeah. then... You can. I am giving you the opportunity to do that. I would like for us to engage in that, and so put your focus there. If you haven't seen my work already, don't go looking it up for now. <laughs> if you have already seen my work, put that idea in the back shelf because that's not who I am. Yes, Bruce Beckham is informed by a lot of my own personal, like you know, energies and desires and like. It, 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 it's coming from somewhere that's genuine to me, but it's not the entirety of who I am. And it's also not who I am 100% of the time, right? I'm not always going to be on like that guy. I'm not always going to be, you know, throwing someone against the wall or fucking them or like smacking someone in the face. Like sometimes I'm going to be a little bit more romantic or just want to be left the fuck alone. <laughs> so, you know, the, the, it's, it's tricky when it comes to that stuff, but, um, for me, it's really no different than any other performer or actor. They go, they do their job, sometimes they play a role that other people really enjoy, and that's great, but then they go home and there's someone else. Bruce Breckham, I want to thank you so mm -hmm. much. How can people tune in <laughs> once again tomorrow to uh, your Friday show? Yeah, so they will be able to catch Josh Moore's show every day on Instagram by following Josh Moore official that's M-O-O-R-E official on Instagram and he'll have an Instagram live going every day at, every Monday through Friday at 3 o'clock I'll be on at 3.30 tomorrow and you'll be talking you can also follow him. yeah yep yeah, it's an Instagram video so there'll be both of us we'll be having a conversation back and forth people can type in and text questions or just comments uh, they can also follow me on Instagram it's Bruce Elanius uh, and if they want to check out my OnlyFans, where they'll see a lot more, yeah, uh, including a giant, including a giant dick, uh, it is yeah. OnlyFans OnlyFans dot com backslash Bruce Beckham Triple X. All of these are listed on tagspodcast dot com. Bruce, thank awesome. you so much. Great. You're always like so great yeah. to the show. I want to really thank you. Yeah, for that. absolutely. Yeah, no, I, I'm happy to be a part of it. Steve. Uh, good luck and stay safe and stay healthy. I will. Thank you so much. All right. Okay. Absolutely. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oh my goodness, I love that man so much. Um, I have a. Um, well, you know what? I've got a little thirteen minutes left here. If you want to call in to this live show and weigh in on anything you've heard tonight, the number to call in is nine zero eight. 312-1015. Again, it's 908-312-1015. Um, you can tell I've had some wine. I love my special guests. Um, I'm just so impressed with us right now, our gay community and our community at large, that we're, we have so much content going on during this coronavirus because what else can we do um i'm just going to look at my feed real quick um osip bangit says stay safe everyone i want to thank you for that um let me just get into a couple of hot topics real quick um, but again, if you want, in the last few minutes, if you want to weigh in and give us some um, feedback or anything you've heard tonight or ask some for some solicited sex advice, the number again is 908-312-1015. In the meantime, I um, wanted to talk about a couple of hot gay sex topics. And did you know that... There's um, going to be a world, prides around the world go digital amid the coronavirus crisis. 
um, with hundreds of LGBTQ Pride festivities originate, originally set for June, now being canceled or postponed, organizers are, are taking the celebrations online. I should probably put my glasses on. Um, yes, there we go. In the wake of the coronavirus pandemic, Pride groups around the world have convened to create Global Pride 2020, a virtual gathering scheduled for Saturday, June uh, 27th. Interesting. According to its official description, the event will use online platforms to deliver a pride in which everyone can participate wherever they are in the world. It will include musical performances, speeches, and key messages from human rights activists. The event will be live streamed and people will be invited to join in the event from home. Um, the initiative is spearheaded by Interpride and European Pride Organizers Association, two of the world's largest uh, coalitions of pride organize, organizers. So um, I will list that on um, tagspodcast.com and see how that goes if um, we're going to continue with that. Um, I think that is it for now. I want to thank my guest tonight for calling in, um, DJ Laurent. Um, I'm going to list everything on Tag's podcast on how you can follow him, but tomorrow night he is DJing a um, jockstrap party that you should join in on. I think I am going to do that. I'm going to put my jock strap on as well as um, Bruce Peckham is also going to be um, at 3.30 tomorrow. I will list all of that and you can hear him. Join him on his uh, on his OnlyFans page as well. Um, in the meantime, you can go to our Patreon page and take a part of our um, polls that we got going on every single week and get some extra special sexy perks. Go to patreon.com forward slash tags podcast. I will, you will hear from me next week with my co host Jeremy Ross Lopez and Lincoln in another episode of Tags Podcast. And I want to thank you for joining me tonight live on Sex with Stevie. This show gets repackaged tomorrow morning uh, in our feed. In the meantime, stay safe, be healthy, and I will see you soon.